Hello everyone, welcome to France where Sunday racing has always been a fact of life. Sunday in Chantilly for the Prix du Jockey Club, the French Derby to end our Derby week. And from Epsom, home of the Derby and of the Oaks, to Chantilly, the original fountainhead of French racing, and this year saved at the 11th hour from the bureaucrats' acts. For a plan to radically streamline French racing, including the closure of Chantilly Racecourse until its supporters, chaired by trainer Francois Boutin, won a reprieve at the last gasp. And what a place they've saved. For while Chantilly Racecourse is old-fashioned, its training grounds is the Europe's finest training centre. Francois Boutin's is only one of the many major stables whose horses exercise daily amongst the turf and trees of the Chantilly operation. It is from amongst these 3,000 thoroughbreds that today's French defence will come against a five-strong British attack. And at the head of the French forces is a filly, the unbeaten Moonlight Dance. Not since 1874 has a filly won the French derby, but Moonlight Dance's connections are very hopeful that she can make history on her own. And the British challenge has history against it. Only twice in 150 years has a British runner scored in the French derby. Here's the record over the last 10 years. Rainbow Quest was third in 84, Empson third in 88, Old Vic the first winner in 89, and Sanglemore the second winner in 1990. The ground today is 3.4 on the penetrometer scale. That's good to soft in our language. There are 15 runners for this sweeping right-handed mile and a half listed now by Graham Goode. So number one, drawn six, Hawker's News at 7.8 to one, ridden by Michael Kinane, is uh, combined in the betting with this opening show with River Wacky, ridden by Eric Saint-Martin, they're drawn three. Drawn 13, Cicereo, 7.7 .7 to one, Walter Swinburne. At the two, Strategic Choice, 41.4 to one, Richard Quinn. Drawn 10, Celtic Arms, 5.7 to one, Gerald Mossy. And Shanghai Venture is drawn four, 55.9 to 1 with Wendell Woods. Bataillon, drawn 5, is 5.5 .5 to 1, Olivier Pestier. And combined in the betting, both Boxcard and Sodded Illusion at 10.5 to 1. Boxcard, the pacemaker, is ridden by Bruno Marchand. And Sodded Illusion, blinkered for the first time by Alan Badel. Al Riffer is drawn 14 at 7 to 1, ridden by John Reed. Bahamian Sunshine, 15.9 to 1, drawn 11, ridden by Pat Edery. Drawn 15, Fanny on Defet. 31.6 to 1, Sebastian Mayo. Drawn 12, Tikkanen, 11.4 to 1, by Cash Asmussen. From 8, Percuton, 7.8 to 1, Guy Guignard. And the favourite from the 9 stall is Moonlight Dance at 3.9 to 1, and she is ridden by Terry Jeanne. Here at Chanty, last minute preparations have been going on in the weighing room, this most ancient of tracks. And out in the paddock, John Oxy is battling with hay fever. And the sunshine is here at Chantilly. Yes, yeah, sorry about the voice. This is Hawker's News. Originally entered for the derby, but then he showed so little at home they took him out. His reaction was to win the Linkfield derby trial. So, like Al Riffer and Cicereo, he was a late entry here. At least on paper, Cicereo is the one with the solid gold form line, the horse who beat Airhard. Trained by Henry Cecil, Cicereo went on to win the D stakes at Chester, but his great claim to fame was the field and stakes at Newmarket. As they race down the hill, it's Cicereo and Wayanka, Cicereo, Wayanka, Cicereo, Wayanka, the edge. They're inside the final furlong now. And Cicereo keeping up the gallop from Wayanka. The Erhard back in third place. And Erhard suddenly sprouts wings and starts to fly. But Cicereo has this. Oh, does he? Cicereo, Erhard, Cicereo, Cicereo from Erhard. And Cicereo, the outside of Rainbow Heights from in third place now. Zitaro going after them, just gets a tap on the tail, waiting behind them. Stash the cash is out the back as down the straight they come. And the red colours on the left, Cicereo going on. Yellow colours, Rainbow Heights. Zitaro in behind them, the dark green. Here comes waiting, but it's Cicereo's race this. Cicereo's gone three clear as they race up toward the line. This goes to Cicereo. At the post, Cicereo is the winner, waiting in second. Here's another who was never entered for our derby, and Al Rifa made that look a pretty risky omission by running away with the Madigan's Newmarket stakes. Dane, who was second, came over here to run a good second to Milcom in the Prix Jean Pra. Quite a compliment when you see how Al Rifa treated him at Newmarket. 
Uh, they come down towards the two furlong mark when it's Shepton Mallet in the league. Here goes Darne the outside and Alri for the black sleeve jacket who swoops to conquer as they come down at the hill towards the final furlong. It's Al Riffa going on from Darne and Shepton Mallet and behind these comes Florin Concordial and Ionian. It's Al Riffa. What an attitude this horse has got. What a positive attitude uh, this day in Hill Striding. Six clear up towards the line. This goes to Al Riffa and the man in form, John Reed, at the line. Al Riffa takes it. Al Riffa wins it easily. Darne is second. No filly has won the French Derby this century, and the lovely Moonlight Dance has only run twice, but Andre Farb doesn't make that many mistakes, and her pre saint Allery convinced him. And it's Mrs. Arcana, the grey colours, running the rail. Here comes Moonlight Dance in the dark blue on the outside, and what a powerful stride she's got. Moonlight Dance comes to take Mrs. Arcana in the orange colours. Three Angels is staying on, but it's Moonlight Dance as they come inside the final furlong from Mrs. Arcana. Three Angels in pursuit, but Moonlight Dance has gone too clear. Three Angels staying on for second place as they race up towards the line. Moonlight Dance is going to take it. Moonlight Dance, Three Angels, Mrs. Arcana. And at the line, Moonlight Dance is the winner. Moonlight Dance takes it. Three Angels, Mrs. Arcana in third. Celtic Arms, as a grandson of Brigadier Gerard, cracked a bone in his leg last year, but he came back in style to win the Group 1 pre-Lupin. And they make the final turn. It is Boxcard now sent to the front. Gumboat Diplomacy in blue is coming there very strongly indeed. Ticket and on the outside. And just in behind these, saint Devin looking for room is Celtic Arms in the pink cap and running through on the rail. Solid illusion. And it's now Ticket and that's come to press Gumboat Diplomacy. On the outside, Celtic Arms with a run through on the inside. It's Solid Illusion. But it's Ticket and that just goes on. But here comes Celtic Arms with a strong leg sweep and up towards the line. Celtic Arms is going to take it at the post. Celtic Arms. Celtic Arms is the winner at the line. It's Celtic Arms who takes it from solid illusion in second. 50 years ago, France was on the eve of the biggest overseas invasion in history. Today, with five raiders, it's the greatest British assault on the French derby. Four of our previous 27 challengers went down to Darshan in 1984, but with a third of the 15 runners, the natives are très apprehensive, but they've backed Moonlight Dance to become the 18th successful favourite in the last 40 years. She's 3.9 to 1 in the most open French derby ever. But pre-Lupin form has been the key trial. Eight winners have taken this race since 1960, Celtic Arms, 5.2 to 1. And the Lupa second and third, Solid Illusion, coupled with Box Card, 13.4 to 1. And Tikkanen, 12.6 to 1. The pick of our challengers is reckoned to be Al Rifa, Richard Hannan's first attempt of the race, 5.3 to 1. And Cicereo, only Henry Cecil's second runner. He won it, of course, with Old Vic five years ago, 5.4 to 1. Hawker's News, who sire Sadler's Wells, split Darshan and Rainbow Quest in 84, coupled with River Wacky, is an 8-to-1 chance. And Strategic Choice, 47.4 to 1. And our complete outsider, Shanghai Venture for the Woods family, that's 54.7 to 1. But is that Moonlight Dance a wonder filly? Or is this going to be D for Derby Day? And are the Brits going to triumph again, just as they did on the beaches of Normandy 50 years ago? The French have no compunction about asking horses to parade before a classic. This day, sponsored by the Arab Emirates, has already had a race for Arab horses, and as befits a place of style, Chantilly retains its international flair. Can our horses wave the flag? Join us after the break. Welcome back as the 15 runners for the Prix du Jockey Club, the French Derby, gather at the starting stalls. Remember, five British challengers in against the might of France and the track at Chantilly, a perfect contrast to Epsom. Flat and then downhill after the start, a right-handed instead of left-handed turn, and an uphill climb rather than descent in the straight. Chantilly was under threat of closure in the winter. This race should show that it was worth saving. Cicereo and Walter Swinburne going in, and there's Bahamian Sunshine, Pat Edery in the colours of Fard Salmon, who's just bought this horse, uh, trained by Andre Fard. As he goes in, we see the line Alain Bardell on number one. There's our Rifa, my idea of uh, Britain's principal hope, with John Reed, Tick Cannon going in now, and uh, in the foreground is Celtic Arms, but that's our Rifa and John Reed. There's the filly, Moonlight Dance. 
Celtic Arms in the background. So those, these will be the last two to go in. Celtic Arms, just look how short Gerald Mosse rides. John Reed, slightly not more normal length on Al Reefer. But uh, this is Celtic Arms and Gerald Mosse, the Tri Lupin winner. Always a tremendous trial. They uh, understart his orders and they race away. A little bit slow to go was uh, Shanghai Venture. He just dwells astride in the stalls and the pace in the race should come from Boxcard, set to put the pace to Solid Illusion. And with the noseband, it's Boxcard going on. Boxcard has the lead from on the inside in the yellow colour, Strategic Choice racing prominently. On the outside, Cicerea, Bahamian Sunshine in a good place. Uh, Hawker's News is taking quite a keen hold early on. And uh, one of the back markers is Bataillon, and also Fanny on defect, and also uh, towards the rear at this very early stage is Celtic Arms. But they're through the first quarter mile, and it's Boxcard leading with the noseband. The yellow colours the rail is Strategic Choice. Cicerea behind these, Bahamian Sunshine, our riffer is out wide. Through on the inside is River Wacky, and with that one is Hawker's News. Moonlight Dance holds a good position. Uh, down the pack is Bataille, and also towards the rear is Solid Illusion. Fanny on Defet, uh, De Canon is towards the rear. Per Couton is uh, towards the rear too, and still last is Celtic Arms. But up front, it's Boxcard who leads by length. Two strategic choice running the rail, Cicereo in third, the dark blue colours of Moonlight Dancer showing in fourth place. Just in behind these comes El Riffa on the outside with Bahamian Sunshine. But up front, little change as they head down towards the halfway stage. It's Boxcard leading by length. Two strategic choice in second, Cicereo going third, Bahamian Sunshine in the green colours four. Blue Jacket, Moonlight Dance 5, and then behind that one is River Rock Wacky, and the back marker is Fanny on Defet, and they begin the turn out of the back straight. It's Boxcard who still just has the edge to strategic choice in second. Cicero, the red colours in third place. Bahamian Sunshine wide of Bataillon, running the rail is River Wacky. Wide of these as they start the turn in is Al Riffer on the outside of Moonlight Dance at the top of the home run now, and um, Boxcard joined on the inside by strategic choice and as they head for home strategic choice the inside of box guard here in the red colors comes Cicereo Bahamian sunshine with a run moonlight dance wide still in the black sleeves is Al Riffer on the extreme outside is Hawker's News and they're inside the final quarter mile now and it's Cicereo underwater Swinburne going for home strategic choice runs the rail here comes Pet Kutong with a run on the outside Al Riffer widest of all with a run Celtic arms they're inside the final furlong now and it's Celtic arms in the green colors down the centre of the track who takes the call now from Solid Illusion who's finishing very fast next to the rails up towards the line Celtic Arms Solid Illusion at the line Celtic Arms just takes it from Solid Illusion in second through to third was our Riffer and a mighty run from him and then behind these came Tikanen and behind Tikanen strategic choice and after strategic choice was Cicereo and so the result then of this the French derby it's a win for number five Celtic Arms in the colours of Mr. J.L. Bouchard trained by Pascal Barry ridden by Gerard Mosse and he came with a late sweep from last to first threw on the inside solid illusion the horse with the bandaged forelegs may have been a bit unlucky in running I saw him just had to snatch up a little bit the yellow colours what a race strategic choice has run but here on the right of the picture comes Celtic Arms Gerard Mosse in the green jacket who's come from last to first to take the French derby in the dying strides and as they hit the line boy isn't he pleased well, Willie Carson and our hub came from an awful long way back at Epsom, but just look where Gerald Mosse and Celtic Arms have come from. They've been last, in fact, for most of the race, and it's only now, about two and a half furlongs from home, after turning into the straight, that Gerald Mosse begins to pull Celtic Arms out. That's Hawker's News outside him in Sheikh Mohammed's colours, and Al Rifa in front, it's Al Rifa now who Celtic Arms comes to challenge and pass. Up in the lead, Cesareo and Strategic Choice are disputing it, but neither of them has any answer to Celtic Arms' charge. It won him the Prix Lupin, and it wins him the spoils again today. Over on the far rails, Solid Illusion, whose pacemaker has made this such a genuine gallop, comes through to take advantage and second place, and Al Rifa runs on really well to take third. He looks a stayer for the future, but Celtic Arms is the winner. So back they come, Gerald Mosse and Celtic Arms. 
to a rapturous and well-deserved welcome. Great achievement for the trainer, Pascal Barry, because don't forget that this horse had a hairline fracture of his off four last year. As you can see, he's not only sound, but fit, and well enough to win the French Derby now. Will he perhaps become an Arc de Triomphe winner? Sad news of the race was Moonlight Dance. Uh, she was a total disappointment, the second disappointment for her trainer, Andre Fabre, in three days, because, of course, intrepidity ran surprisingly badly in the Coronation Cup. Celtic Arms, the ninth Lupin winner since 1960 to win the French Derby. Hernando last year, and you go back to the early 60s, La Fabula, Wright Royal in Charlottesville, pays six francs 30, that includes your one franc stake for the win, two francs 70 for the place, solid illusion, four francs 20. Al Rifa, three francs, and the forecast, 41 francs 70. But after the race, Pat Edry reckoned that this derby was far better than ours at Epsom. Now, that won't endear him, certainly to Erhard supporters. By the way, news on Erhard, he misses the Irish derby, goes for the coral eclipse at Sandown at the beginning of July. That's on Channel 4, and then on to the King George. But let me ask you a question. Who would you back if they met over a mile and a half, Celtic Arms or Erhard? John, you've done best of the, the British, but you were drawn on the outside. How difficult was it? Well, it didn't help my cause at all, bruv. Um, I don't know why every time I come here, I either get drawn on the extreme outside or extreme inside and here really you uh, the draw does affect you quite a bit i tried to jump uh, i intend to jump quick and, and if there was no pace to, to get up there and then and drop in but there was a lot of pace and um i was rolling along as best i could and uh but never really got in uh wally swinburne i was trying to track he was having trouble getting in and i had to just um, ride the races that come um, I had uh, a reasonable, I was reasonably happy where I was, but I would have liked to have been two more close to the fence. Going down the hill, I got in a little bit behind Pat, um, travelled quite nicely down there. Wally was on my inside, Wally Swinburne, he, he's, he's made a move outwards, um, about the four and a half, five furlough marker, and he's taken me out to the outside again. Um, from there, I'm on the outside all the way. And, uh, How about getting home? Some people are doubting whether he'd actually get the mile and a half fully. Well, he's, he's got it very well. I, I always thought he would, and, and uh, he's galloped all the way to the line. And this horse, is, he's still a baby, and he, he really missing the predominant wasn't a great help to him because he needed another race. But I was delighted with him. I think he's run a cracker, and he'll do nothing but improve. We've now had the two big derbies in the week, the English and the, and the French derby. How do the two races compare, do you think? Well, I think um, this race has run at a, a good, strong pace, and they quickened up well. Uh, you know, I would compare them very, this race very favourable with the, with the Epsom derby. Where does Al Rifa, does he come back to France for the arc, do you imagine? I should think he will. I mean, they might be talking about putting him in the Irish derby. Um, but he's, he's a very nice horse, and I think he'll, he'll go on improving, and uh, it's only his fourth race in his life, you know. So John Reed, Colonel Collins, and Al Rifa, close to the line. Yeah, I'll keep getting them placed. Um, I'll try and win another one. <laughs> Walter, riding this race compared to the Epsom race, how did the rhythm go? Well, I think probably the question that everyone wants to hear is um, answered is that, um, you know, which one's the better? And personally, I think the Epsom Derby was the better race. How did this go for you? It's quite a packed race running to the turn. It was a perfect trip for me, bruv. Um, you know, my horse, um, he's ideally suited by a good pace. And um, obviously, it was his first time over 2,400 mile and a half of people back home. But... Uh, I mean, I really felt at the 400-meter pole that uh, you know, I was on a winning chance. And um, he's such a game and generous horse that he's a very difficult horse to assess whether he actually gets the trip or not. And, I mean, I think thinking about it afterwards, probably his most effective trip would be um, mile and a quarter. At this stage, we're also on look ahead to Irish Derby's King George's Arcs. How good do you think this winner is? Can he finish very well? Yes. You know, take nothing away from the winner. He must be quite a nice horse. But, um, you know, I think the better trial was in Lepsum. And... Um, for me, I'd be happier to be on the Epsom horses than the French. And, and looking about the, the ride Willie got out of Earhub has to be one of the most extraordinary Epsom performances of all time. Absolutely. It just shows you class tells out at the end of the day. No matter what they say about Epsom, it's the perfect trial for horse, human being, for jockey, trainer, you name it. And all the people who call for a change in what's going on. It's been going on for 100 years there. We've had 40-odd runners. And I hate to see it changed. It was, it's the perfect trial. At the end of the day, the best horse always wins there. That's the action from Shanti. But British horses have been involved in other races in Europe. News from John Oakesy.
Now, here's the result of the Grosser Preis der Wirtschaft from Baden-Baden. Mark Rimmer won on Cornado. Uh, second was number four, Embarcadero. And third, number three, Shrewd Idea, ridden like the Oaks winner by Frankie de Torre for Michael Corns this time. And at San Siro, the great result for England and Britain, Clive Britain, and for Michael Roberts. They won with Al Flora, the horse who went to Hong Kong for the international race last year. Second was number 10, Venti Quattrofoli, ridden by the Derby hero, W. Carson. And third, number eight, Morigi, ridden by M. Tellini. So, an exciting end to a wonderful international week. And already, different opinions about the relative merits of the two derbies at Epsom and here at Chantilly. That's the fun of racing. Always new questions to be answered, new judgments to be made. And let's say au revoir with both derbies and you be the judge. And they begin the descent in Tattenham Corner, and it's Mr. Bailey's doing the work. Mr. Bailey's Penkeda on the outside. Air Hard with a lot of running to do. Sunshack is out the back, and they're coming round Tattenham Corner. And Mr. Bailey's is clear of his field, clear by four or five lengths now as they head for home. Colonel Colt's coming with a run, and then uh, Camasine's there with chances. Linny Head with a run, King's Theatre with a run. They're past the three, and Mr. Bailey's is clear by six lengths to the north. The white cap is King's Theatre, spotty cap the outside. Is Colonel Collins and they come down to the two furlong marker. And Mr. Bailey's in the lead, clear by three. Colonel Collins, the spotting cap, white cap. Is King's Theatre is between these three now. Mr. Bailey's has come back to the field. Erhard is picking up well, but it's King's Theatre that goes to the line. Uh, King's Theatre from Colonel Collins. Here comes a favourite Erhard with a devastating burst on the outside as they race up toward the line. Erhard and Willie Carson lift the derby. Erhard, King's Theatre, Colonel Collins. Mr. Bailey is Camasine, Pancada, then came Golden Ball and Jabberoot, Star Selection, Ionio. And they begin the turn out of the back straight. It's Boxcar who still just has the edge to strategic choice in second. Cicero, the red colours in third place. Bahamian Sunshine wide of Bataillon. Running the rail is River Wacky. Wide of these as they start the turn in is Al Riffer on the outside of Moonlight Dance at the top of the home run now. And um, Boxcar joined on the inside by strategic choice. And as they head for home, Strategic choice, the inside of box guard. Here in the red colours comes Cicereo. Bahamian Sunshine with a run. Moonlight dance wide still in the black sneeze. Is Al Riffer on the extreme outside? Is Hawker's News? And they're inside the final quarter mile now. And it's Cicereo underwater Swinburne going for home. Strategic choice runs the rail. Here comes Pek Kutong with a run on the outside. Al Riffer, widest of all with a run. Celtic Arms, they're inside the final furlong now. And it's Celtic Arms in the green colours down the centre of the track who takes the call now from Sonsin Illusion, who's finishing very fast next to the rails. Up towards the line, Celtic Arms, Sonsin Illusion at the line. Celtic Arms just takes it from Sonsin Illusion in second.